does solving lead code problems make you feel like this? Or like this? So we will be going over three things you might need to change or add to turn things around. So let's jump right into it. And the first point is that you're stuck in tutorial hell. It means that you're watching hours and hours of non-stop videos without actually pushing yourself to solve the problem on your own. Even if you decide to pause the video and try to do it yourself, once our mind becomes aware of a tutorial that exists for a specific problem that we have, the less effort it will actually put into trying to get that problem done by its own merit. So it will just give you that feeling of, hey, you can't do this, just watch that video and get it over. And some of you know what I'm talking about. And even though some of you might say, yeah, I, I, I try to attempt it first myself, I pause the video and when I can't do it, I play the video. It sadly, it does not work that way. Once your mind becomes aware of a specific tutorial that exists, for a problem that you're facing out there, the less effort it subconsciously produces to help you get that task done. Instead, there's always that seed, that voice in the back of your head that's saying, just watch that tutorial and get it over. So what you should do instead is, you should actually first open that lead code problem that you wanted to solve. Do not search for any tutorials whatsoever. Break that down into multiple steps so this is what i have to try and do first this is what i have to try and do second and see how you can go over those steps and derive solutions for it now for each step if you do get stuck something so instead of searching for the whole thing search for that specific thing only and then move on to continue with other parts of the problem that you broke down so just because you cannot solve one part does not mean that you just search the answer for the whole solution and get it over with and say, you know what, I tried. It, it does not work that And this brings us to point number two, and that is, we're still not using AI. Just because AI has scared some of you into thinking that it will take your job. <laughs> <laughs> does not mean that it's still not the greatest asset and tool that you have to fight against those technical interviews that you want to face. You have to use AI. It will, and yes, some of you might say, you know what, I've tried using AI and it just does not work so well. And sure, it does get stuck somewhere here and there along the way. But at the same time, how to think about that, how to break it down. And that is what you're trying to catch on from that. Just to reiterate, the same thing that was happening when we said tutorial help, do not get stuck into a chat GPT or an AI. Always try and use these tools and assets in a way that it does not become a crutch for you to rely on. So that you do not sit in an interview like this. And the third point is that you're bad at maths. You see, the lead code problems that we now solve are almost similar to the word problems that we used to solve back in school. And if you were bad at that, there's like this connection. This, there's this unresolved problem in your life that you didn't ever, you just ignored. You just said, okay, I won't have to ever have to face this again. But yeah, whenever you hear that maths is required for computer science, it is not just okay data science and linear algebra stats but also being good at word problems help you solve the lead code questions that you see. Wait, so you're asking us to do maths again? No, you don't have to do maths again, but you would have to learn that specific way of looking at questions, seeing what it is asking for reading between the lines and you can know how that is playing a role is if getting your questions completely wrong but as soon as you see the solution you understand everything that means that the way you're interpreting the question is wrong and that means that you're not really 
a good judge of what the question is asking for. So instead of uh, trying to read code for 10 hours and finding a way to do the question incorrectly, it is better if you first try and resolve the root cause of the problem which is that you're not able to understand what the question is asking for. To watch certain videos on how to break down the problems into multiple steps, how to solve word problems in general, how to deduce uh, or capture things that are needed in an instant because sometimes during your interviews you would have a time constraint. Also, here is a bonus tip. Try using a language like Python once you start getting your questions right if you don't use it already. During a technical interview, no one would force upon you to use a certain language. So, why not get it done with language that takes the least amount of time? Those of you saying that, oh, but Java and C++ is more impressive uh, for an employer, uh, no, just, it is not work that way. An employer wants to see your problem solving skills. And whether you do it in Python, Mumbo Jumbo, it does not matter as long as you get your point across that you know your stuff. So if you know your stuff, try and get it done in the time that is allotted to you. And yeah, that will just increase your efficiency and overall, yeah, it will just increase your efficiency. That's about it. I would say that I am a new science student in my third year. And yeah, I am myself getting a hand. But if you like the video or would like to see more content like this, please do a like and do subscribe to my channel. But yeah, I hope to see you guys stick around. Uh, take care. Bye.